What's up guys, welcome to Project Porsche where I fix up and modify my 924S. Last time I painted the black tops of my door panels and this episode I'm gonna clean up these door panels and get them painted. Guess it's a good time to clean this thing up. They were pretty nasty. The door handles were pretty nasty too. You don't really realize how dirty and gross they are until you start cleaning them up. And even though I scrubbed them really well, they were still dirty. This thing is like really like dirtily stained up and I did scrub it, but it's just still got that like yellow hue to it. I don't know, from like arm sweat or something. So I picked up this uh, dye at Walmart off of the discount shelf. It was seven. What was it? it says 784. I paid a dollar fifty for it. I'm gonna see if it'll work on this thing. I knew there was a slim chance that it would match, but I thought I'd try it anyway. It's got a sponge on it. They make it for redying the stuff when it's in your car without uh, having to, you know, spray it all over the place. It says clean surface with mineral spirits using a clean cloth to dry surface when dry, follow with soap and water. And so the thing on the bottle, the color looked really, really close, but it wasn't an exact match. It was a little too brown, and I decided to get this stuff in the spray can instead. I mean, it's very close, but it's too dark. Too dark. Too dark. I went up to Welly, the auto parts store by my house, and I picked up this SEM color coat, flexible coating. So we're gonna be spraying this on the door panels. So I used the blue tape to have a crisp line and then I just do the rest with some lesser expensive plain masking tape and doing the other door panel. So here, I'm getting them ready for the, for the new clips. I got these clips off of Amazon. You can also get them off of eBay or other places have them too. That's the part number if you need it. There were still some high spots in the fiberglassing, so I just got out my grinder and did a little more grinding around the edge and everywhere where I had added that fiberglass just to make sure there was absolutely nothing sticking up that would pull the door panel away from the inside of the door. I got in here and tried to clean up inside these holes as best as I could. Putting on the clips, just like a so, don't you know? These clips, you have to twist them and push down as you put them in. They kind of twist and then they stick in there. So I brought the panels outside. Here are the factory speaker grills. They looked the worst, actually. They looked worse than any other panel inside the car. I don't know if the plastic is different on them or what. Here I am sanding them with some wet dry sandpaper and then washing them and cleaning them off, drying them with the air hose. And then I brought everything out here, got out my SEM paint and started painting and decided that my color was a little too gray. And then my neighbor Melvin came home. Hey, there's my neighbor. What's up? Got a wire stripper. Did ya? Yeah. Nice. What's up? Shout out to Melvin. Hope you guys are doing good. All right, so the next day I came back with a new color and this is the color that I ended up finishing the job with. Here I'm starting outside. I painted the door handles in the speaker grills and then I decided that it was too windy out and I didn't want the paint to fly around the neighborhood and land on anyone else's car or anything. So I pulled the crews out of the garage and went inside and started painting in here instead. Turn it into a like a paint fog machine room. And then after that, I put up a fan to get some fresh air back in and out. Doo -doo -doo. Time passes. So here's the finished product. They look pretty good. There's the door panel. My armrests looked really nice, and I did try to get a fairly thick coat on there. So there is my Italian leather that I ordered off of eBay, and it looks a shade darker there, but in real life, the color looks very close. I'm pretty happy with that. Turned out pretty good. So here I'm just removing the tape, and there's my nice crisp tape line that I wanted to make sure I got. 
painted whatever you want to call it vinyl spray paint basically I've got like a super duper resilient strong door panel now that if you know you wanted to mount something on here or change it or whatever add a switch or do something in the future now there's some structure behind here and it'll take a lot of abuse because I've got a couple of layers of woven fiberglass impregnated into the polyester fiberglass resin and you should be able to pull this door panel off without having any problems. Underneath the door panel, there's this. A factory foam rubber gasket that goes around the door handle. Deteriorated, crumbly. They do sell new ones, but it's just a piece of foam rubber, so I decided to make my own. Now I'm just creating a new piece of foam rubber that deteriorated and came off. That thing is to seal around this, but I've got it so dang sealed here, I might not even need it anymore. But I'm just wondering how thick I should make this right now. I guess if we do millimeters because we're all German and whatnot. Complicated. Put your right foot in, you put your right foot out. So I just tried to match the original one. And after I finished my art project, I'm debating on if I want to try to stack this up. Turned out okay. I still ended up having to trim them a little bit later. So I got out the same spray adhesive that I've used on everything else so far and stuck the two halves together. Like I so, don't you know? So you put on the metal door handle and then you stretch the plastic thing back to adjust it and tighten it down with the screws. Here's my new gasket, which I probably didn't even need because I've got the door so dang sealed by now. And here I'm cutting out the relief for the cable that runs to the actual latch on the inside of the door. I covered it with the adhesive spray, and here I'm sticking it on the door. Stickity stick! So, I had to reassemble the door panels, and here you can see I am I put the door handle on, and then you need to put the thing that sticks in, like kind of holds it into the door on the back side and tighten it down with a wrench. Here I'm starting to put on the passenger side panel. And you want to tuck the wires if you have power windows and stuff. You want to make sure you get the wires tucked through. You need to watch your lock rod because you'll catch the door panel on that and bend it. And then you need to get your body clips in the right holes. First and foremost is getting that thing that you bolt to the back of the handle to tuck into the pocket that's made for it on the door. And then once you've got that in that hole, then you can kind of just lower the door panel down over the holes that are in the door for the body clips. I found that the best way to install these switches is to put the switch into the bezel first, then plug the wires into the back and then stick the whole thing in the door. This is the best way I've found to do it. Otherwise, like, it's really tough to get those switches in there right. Turn it on, see if it works. Dun, dun, dun! It works! Yeah. All right, so I'm back over on the driver's side. And here I'm drilling the hole through the fiberglass that I did earlier in the earlier episode. I put some tape on here to just support the door handle until I get it onto the door. So even though I've got fiberglass back there, it's not kind of cranking or weighing on the door panel until I get it on the door. There I'm tightening up the bolt with a ratchet. I guess I thought that was good. Here I'm putting the handle on this side and then putting on that plastic thing that holds the cable and tightening that down putting my glue on my foam that I probably didn't even need and get ready to put the panel on here I'm putting that rubber felt covered seal on the inside of the panel and that just slips on and I just used the stock one again that was there here you got to feed the wires through and um, basically this is how you put the door panel back on. As long as you make sure you have that thing that you bolted to the back of the door panel in the slot on the door that it's supposed to go in, then you're in pretty good shape. You could just kind of watch yourself and watch the panel, make sure you're not catching it on the door lock rod. 
and make sure your wires that you need to have poked through are poked through and then you can bolt the handle to the actual door or screw it I guess they're long screws I found that it works the best to start at the one closest to the front of the door and then work your way back with those screws. There's a cardboard ring on the outside of the speakers that on the passenger side I actually cleared out the back side of the door panel for, but on this side I didn't do it so here I just cleared the ring itself and that's what I'm doing with the knife. So I have to take these screws out in order to put the cover over the speaker. There's spacers underneath the speaker and I don't want those things to drop or fall down when I take out the screws to put on my covers. So I'm just gonna take some of this silicone and I'm gonna dab it in on either side of these spacers through the holes and then I know that silicone will hold that spacer behind there from falling out. And then I have to make some sort of small spacers to go between cover here and the face of the where it bolts to the speaker because there's a gap in there and I want that to be filled so I'm gonna come up with some sort of small nylon spacers for these grills. So I got off the Permatex silicone and squirted it in behind there. Gotta do the other side. The silicone kind of held the washers and the uh, baffle that's on the back of the speaker all together and it, it actually worked pretty well. I found these spacers on the internet that I'm guessing Porsche probably switched to in later 944s instead of the little small nylon spacers. So if you were to get a pair of these, you wouldn't have to deal with the spacers like I did. You wouldn't have to put the silicone in there. You wouldn't have to worry about it. Part of the problem is the speakers that I have, the frame around them is bigger than the hole in the door panel. So you need to take the panel on and off in order to take the speakers on and off. The factory ones, you can pull the speakers on and off without taking the door panel on and off. And I almost thought about clearancing the frames on the speakers so that I could pull them in and out without having to take the panel off. But uh, for now, the door had to go together this way. And so that was my solution to make it work. And in the end, it worked out really well. I hope you guys enjoyed this portion of the episode. I'm gonna do one more part to episode 10, so check back for episode 10, part three, where I finish my speaker grills. I find some spacers in order to make them fit right, and I get some new stainless steel screws in the correct metric size for the doors and get the door panels and the speakers finally finished. The moment of truth. They are working way better than they were. Way faster than they used to be. There is my tank. My uh, newly formed Porsche safe. It's like shutting a uh, slam, shutting the door on a Bentley. So check back for episode 10, part three. Yeah, baby. Thanks for watching the show, guys. Be sure to check back for new episodes of Project Porsche. See you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. This is pretty much the worst video ever made. Yeah.